much is I'm reading from Pete Walker, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. And what I'm going to do is share some information on abandonment from this book. And I'm going to read a little bit from page 249 and then I'm going to flip through a few slides. So what we have is, is that when we've been abandoned in childhood or we've not been loved or cared for, we end up recreating um, situations. So it's not so much that we attract, it's just that we have dynamics in the world where we'll get into situations with work or, you know, well, as we're growing up, we'll meet people, have friends, date people, whatever. And our early imprints and conditioning will basically mean that when somebody, we meet somebody, what seems normal is normal. And what is, what we've been taught that's not normal for us is not normal. So all that we're, all that's really happening is, is that we're coming across other human beings and some will appear to be just, they fit into our imprint and then there will be others that won't. And the people that don't fit into our imprint, we won't feel comfortable with. And then people who do fit into our early imprint and treatment, will feel comfortable and we will play out a cycle that is pretty well known to us. So for instance, if you were taught, um, you know, as you're small, as we're, when we're small, we're taught to cross the road and we're taught to stop at the curb. Now, if we were taught that we run in front of cars, then basically that's what we would do if we weren't stopped or we weren't nurtured and loved and cared for we would literally just not pay attention to you know, the dangers. And that's what happens in relationships. And it can happen in all areas of life. It can happen online. It can happen in real life. It can happen at work. It can happen in all different scenarios. But I'm sure you're aware, aware of that. Most people watching this are going to be aware of the reality of that. But we cannot, you know, the thing that I don't like that goes around often is that people go on about narcissists and you know, oh, she's codependent and he's a narcissist and he's codependent. And the fact is, is that we've got all aspects to ourselves. We're not just one thing. We're not sort of stuck in stone. So we've all got a little bit of narcissism in us and people will have it to varying degrees. Like I know that if I have, you know, narcissistic tendencies, like I like to be seen on YouTube and just such like, and I like to post and I like to get likes. Um, but at the same time, I don't care if I don't get any. So we're all going to be different and we're all going to do things differently. And we have to work out what is healthy for us. If something is causing us pain, then that's what needs to be looked at. And generally, um, I'm just going to read from this book anyway and then flip th through a few slides. So parental abandonment creates self-abandonment. So when we've been abandoned as children, then it will create self-abandonment as an adult. Pete Walker says, once again, we had to disassociate from these layered defenses because we were not developmentally capable of managing the pain of being abandoned. So if we couldn't manage the pain of being abandoned as a child, then generally we're not going to manage abandonment very well as an adult or what appears to be abandonment. We would not tolerate feeling the fear. We could not tolerate feeling the fear, shame, and inconsol inconsolableness of it all. We could not use our anger and tears to release the shame and fear. So if we were abandoned as a child and we were told to shut up and just not have an opinion, then we're going to live out, again, as an adult, we're going to live like that. We're not going to stand up for ourselves and any fear or shame we feel we're going to hide it and we're not going to speak about it to friends as such like we and he says we could not bear to stay tuned in to the persecutory critic over which we were powerless we could only fight fight flee freeze or fawn so the fight flight freeze fawn being a bit all over the place here but fight flight freeze fawn is where we flight there can be healthy flight, fight, freeze, fawn. So if we're in danger, we could fight or flight or freeze. You know, if it's a snake coming at us, we might freeze or we'll fawn. We might have to be nice to somebody, you know, in order to appease them. But if we've been brought up like that in children, in childhood, we're going to play out one of these more than the other or two or three, depending on what's going on. 
So then he goes on, over time, the elaborate cycle of self-abandonment becomes a habit. So what you might see in yourself is that you, you, know, you begin to achieve something and you begin to do well and then you don't think that you're worthy. So you get into self-abandonment and you abandon yourself. You might abandon the diet, you might stop drinking and abandon the idea and then start drinking again. You might get into relationships that you know are not healthy for you and you repeat it and you see it, but you just, in the back of your mind, you think that, no, it's me, it's, you know, something wrong with me. And when there's nothing wrong with you, it's just that you've been trained in to be in a particular way. Pete Walker says that chronic emotional abandonment devastates the child. Now he's talking about emotional abandonment. So you might then meet people who abandon you emotionally or are not emotionally able to help you you know, evolve. Like I've got friends in my life that I can have really emotional depth, depth with. And then I have acquaintances where I don't really have that emotional depth, but I have, you know, we've got to have a balance of and have emotional depth in our life in order to evolve because with emotional depth and, you know, healthy confrontation, we begin to evolve and we grow. And that's the same as when you're a child, like healthy, you know, confrontation. It's like, don't do this or do that or this, you know, we need to be taught in a healthy way. People can then says it naturally makes her feel, I'll say this again, actually chronic emotional abandonment devastates a child. It naturally makes her or him feel and appear deadened and depressed. Functional parents, which is good enough parenting. So if you are a parent out there watching this, you know, you don't want to feel awful about yourself if you're not, you think you've got to be this perfect parent because this perfect parent doesn't exist. We're all just like, we're either good enough or we're really crap at something. And we need to get to, if people have children, then clearly we want to get to be a good enough parent. And then we also want to get to a place where we're a good enough parent to our own inner child and protect our inner child. Functional parents respond to a child's depression and with concern and comfort. Abandoning parents respond to the child with anger, disgust and anger and disgust and or further abandonment so a parent you know you could be feel abandoned cry about feeling abandoned and then you'd be shamed about feeling abandoned and then made feel worse about feeling abandoned which can in turn exasperate the fear shame and despair that become the abandonment melange so we have to deconstruct self-abandonment we have to understand what happens so that we don't repeat it as an adult and that if we feel we were being abandoned, because everybody's going to be abandoned at some point, everybody dies, everybody's going to leave, we leave jobs, relationships end, we get into, you know, all sorts of situations where things are ending and beginning constantly throughout life. So he talks about deconstructing self-abandonment, which I'm going to read this little section, and then I'll do this few, few slides that I've got. So because of our parents' rejection, the mildest hint of depression, no matter how functional or appropriate, can instantly flash us back into our original abandonment depression. The capacity to self-nurturingly weather any experience of depression, no matter how mild, remains unrealized. Our original experience of parental abandonment has morphed into habitual self-abandonment. So I'd say now, like, I can get a little bit depressed about something, but I don't stay there. And it doesn't mean, you know, that there's something wrong either way. Like sometimes we go through depressive stages that are a bit drawn out and long for different reasons. And then other times we can, throughout a day, you might feel like for a moment, you might think, oh my God, I feel a bit depressed, but then you'll snap out of it. And particularly at this time with um, the lockdown going on, a lot of us are looking at our early trauma and memories. And then also that people that we're not able to see at the moment. So a lot of us are being triggered by into recalling past treatment and past memories and there's nothing wrong with you if that's going on because that's what's going on for many 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 people that i know at the moment he goes on to say we can gradually deconstruct the self-abandoning habit of reacting to depression with fear and shame inner critic catastrophizing and four f acting out so the four f's fight flight freeze form the mindfulness processes described below awaken the psyche's innate capacity to respond with 
compassion to depression. So if you feel a bit depressed right now, have compassion for yourself and know that you're not alone and reach out to somebody who understands you. And you can say to them, I feel a bit depressed right now. Many, I would say that many, many people are feeling depressed right now for different reasons as well. He goes on to say that mindfulness also helps us metabolize the fear and shame that we are forced to feel about being depressed. Ending our reactivity to depression is typically a long, difficult journey. This is because our culture routinely humiliates us for any expression of depression. So people say, oh, snap out of it, you know, let it go, get on with it, you know, look at the bright side, why don't you take a holiday? And that's not the way to cure, you know, childhood imprints and memories. We need to delve in deep. And this book helps you do that. It's a map um, to look at complex PTSD, but also it ties in with and then codependency issues. And we all do that as well. We're all codependent for, you know, either applause or for recognition. We're all doing it at different levels. And there's healthy and there's unhealthy. And then there's the in-between. He says it pathologizes us if we are violating our patriotic duty to be fully engaged in the pursuit of happiness. So this idea that we're going to be happy all the time, it's an illusion. It's like a mirage. It's like we're never going to reach that place. We flit in and out of being you know, happy, a little bit sad, a little bit tearful. All of our emotions are valid. It's not just one place to reach, you know, and spirituality sometimes can make people believe that that's the aim, you know, to be enlightened. And to me, I can certainly say, I'm, it's my birthday coming up in the next week. Um, I'll be 54, um, which is incredible. And I have to say that it's taken me most of my life to even begin to heal this stuff. I got this book in 2017, November, and I read it and I read it again. And then I started reading it on YouTube and I spoke to Pete Walker and about, you know, how I could help people. So it's an ongoing process. He then goes on to say that taboos about depression even emanate from the psychological enmeshment where some schools strip it of its status of legitimate feeling. For them, depression is nothing more than a waste of product of negative thinking, a wasteful product of negative thinking. Other schools of thought reduce it simplistically to being a to being a dysfunctional state that results from the regression of somewhat less taboos emotions like sadness and anger. So again, we're told, you know, don't be sad, don't feel angry, don't feel this, don't feel that. You know, we, we live in a society right now where so many feelings are bouncing around, and we really need to be helping each other to you know, what does that make you feel? So if I, you know, if you feel something right now, it's better to have a friend. And I had a meeting with somebody earlier who asked me the question, what does that make you feel? Something that happened for me, what does it make me feel? And then I was honest in what it made me feel and that what it made me feel tapped back into something in my early childhood. So let's go to this next slide. So let's have a look here. So this is a beautiful picture by somebody, an artist called Brooke Shaden which I adore this picture. And um, she's in the deep, but she has her light. And that speaks like to me in, in big ways. This picture is a beautiful picture. So codependency is part, you know, the abandonment stuff as well, and complex PTSD, it's all meshed in together. Codependency in part is where we have not been loved sufficiently in childhood. It is a learned behavior pattern that needs to be unlearned. So, we need to unlearn it and we do it through psychoeducation. It's not just through one thing, it's not through one book and one you know, therapist or one modality. It's a multifaceted thing. And then you have to give yourself time. So I love this um, picture here. You've got a caterpillar that turns into a cocoon and then it transmutes into becoming a butterfly. So give yourself time so you can say to yourself, I allow myself time and I'm giving myself time and we need this time and right now this is a very good time for many who are you know able to stay at home not for everyone but for many you know use this time to heal yourself we can do this and if you need help I give sessions I you know do work on meetup.com for the ladies I've got a ladies group I'm also doing other things so you can come and check me out on my links and there are so many you know, resources out there at the moment. And then this is the book that I'm reading from. 
and the page that I read from was 249 and 250. So you can get this free on Kindle, I think, and you can also get it free on UK. So Amazon UK and Amazon.com, just check it out. You know, Pete Walker, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. And then this is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Human Needs. So what are your human needs and what have you got rights to? So we've got, we need shelter, clean air, food, water and sleep, physical. Um, the green box is security of employment, family, health, morality, resources and property, love and belonging. And then we've got friendship, family, responsibility, social needs and safety. And then we've got next, confidence, achievement, respect of others and esteem. And then at the top, we've got morality, creativity, so important at this time, um, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice and contributing, okay? So I'm going to leave it there. And if you need my help, I do, this is my well, part of my work and I'm, you know, got details below that you can check out. But I'm going to leave it there today. I'm going to basically end my video there. And if you need any help, then do, as I said, you know, check out my links and you'll see what I'm up to.